mic, camera, action. <sighs> Look, I don't work for Crane. That's the truth, but he did send me. Where is he? I don't know. Why are you here? He has something on me. I had no choice. Right. Any of his men nearby? He didn't say I didn't ask. What about Frank? Part of the setup. Explain. He was supposed to get mean. I escaped to this island. It wasn't meant to be real, but then Frank got drunk and attacked me. Crane wanted me to look like a victim. You get next to me. Yeah. The friend took his part too far. So we meet. What next? I used the cell and called the pre-programmed number, let it ring once. After that, I don't know. A new girl gets kidnapped. This what? What? Your know, fault didn't cross your mind? Okay, so you fall for me, and Crane thinks he has leverage on you. Why? Uh, Force me to do something I don't want to do. What is it that you do? I make the call, not you. I choose when they come, and I'll take Crane out. No, I am not going to help you kill anyone. Do you really believe that Crane is the people he blackmails into helping him live? I spent my whole life sending people up to die. And see you up to live. Welcome back to Filmography, the show dedicated to watching every credited film from an actor's complete back catalogue from past debut through to present day in chronological order. Each episode, I'm joined by an esteemed guest to watch and discuss the next entry from the Focus Filmography and consider how it ranks amidst their career and whether we can trace any typecasting trends or topic traits or theatrical ticks. For episode 37, I'm joined by the resurrected Glenn to discuss the 37th big screen appearance of the Stafe in his fifth franchise sequel, Mechanic Resurrection. We watch, you listen, and hopefully watch along too. So Glyn, thank you very much for returning back to the show to discuss today's surprisingly successful resurrection as Arthur Bishop. Thank you very much for having me again. I did, uh, I did find out that there is a Mechanic 3 in the work, but what the state is going to join that is, is, is mm. just, we'll find out. That's interesting, isn't it? Because he doesn't, Feel like he needs this franchise anymore but as i said in that intro you know this is his his fifth sequel if you like including the expendables and fast and furious so not just his franchise sequels so he clearly likes something about this character at this point in his career to to come back yes i mean i think he really liked the first movie but then they changed which made it less gritty didn't they which is kind of why why didn't like it as much, but maybe he's got a bit more input this time. Mm, that's interesting. Let's start there then. This is definitely less gritty. This has definitely moved away from that inspiration of the 70s original. This one is much more of a kind of a Bond type movie, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's not really, he's not an assassin as such in this. He's, he's just been, I mean, it follows quite closely with the Killer Elite storyline, I thought. That's true. That's interesting because that's another one you've been on to cover, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It drew it drew quite a lot for. I mean, it's almost the same the same storyline. He's being asked to kill a, a group of people, and they've all got to look like accidental death. So it's almost exactly the same. Yeah, and with somebody who's been kidnapped in order to persuade him to do the job. Otherwise, he would happily be retired and living his life out and uh, and not taking part. Yeah. So it could be killer elite too. It could be, couldn't it? It also could be kind of Transporter 4 as well, I feel. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't want to go into too much how similar Stephen's films are, but yeah, they are, so they could all roll into one sometimes. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about them? Do you think this should have maintained the grittiness, or do you think it's a move in the right direction for this sequel? 
I mean, I I really enjoyed it. I, I I was also quite surprised by how little I remembered of the movie as well, because I've definitely seen it and I definitely remembered parts of it, but a lot of it it was it was like a first time watch for me. So mm, I felt exactly the same. That's interesting. I think this must be my second watch. Yeah, I'm thinking it might be my second as well. I really thought I'd seen it more, but I think it's the first one I've seen more times. Mm. And I think everyone remembers the pool scene, don't they? Because it was so heavily used in the marketing and the trailers and the posters. But I agree with you. The rest of it was kind of out of my head completely. Yeah, I think I touched on this when we did the, the first mechanic. I thought that pool scene was in the first mechanic. So I think I've kind of forgotten most of most of this movie, to be to be honest. And although it is enjoyable whilst you're watching it, it is kind of forgettable. I can see why we've both done that. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I thought was Michelle Yeoh and Tommy Lee Jones were completely <laughs> underused. Yeah, there is no point being those two. I mean, they're such, even at this point in their career, so 2016, and then obviously continued on, you expect more from those actors in those roles, don't you? I mean, so, Tommy Lee Jones is kind of a, he's like an extra part in, in a lot of movies, but there wasn't even a single action sequence with Michelle, which is... She, she's a accomplished martial artist, so you thought she might have got involved in some way. Mm, yeah, it's totally thankless, isn't it? She's just literally hanging around on a beach, matchmaking. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that, that's it. And I, I just thought it was it was really weird that she'd been used for that. I mean, there is some, some quite big stars in this. Mm. I mean, because you see their names pop up in the credits, and you're like, oh, Michelle Yeoh, yeah, that's exciting, aren't you? Or oh, where's she going to get involved? And then well, Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, he's billed third Tommy Lee Jones. I don't know why, because he's barely in it. Yeah, I read the, I read the trivia. I think it's an hour and 11 minutes before we even see him. The film's nearly finished when he comes in. <laughs> yeah, because it's t- pretty tight, isn't it? It's a 90-minute movie with credits, really. I was surprised it was 90 minutes because it took a good half an hour for anything to really happen. So I thought it, this must be a two-hour movie because of how long it took for anything exciting to happen. Mm, yeah, we spend a lot of time sort of hanging out on the beach, don't we, getting to know Jessica Alba's Gina and seeing their relationship, I suppose you'd call it, but seeing their burgeoning relationship grow, don't we? Yeah, I mean, he, he knew she was a setup, but he still fell for her, which is a little strange. It's strange, but I kind of get it. I mean, Jessica Alba is one of the most beautiful women in the world. And actually, I thought they looked quite good together. As the film started, I was looking up thinking like, oh, you know, age difference and all that kind of stuff. And it is over 10 years. But on screen, like Jason Satham's all sun kissed. And and I thought, yeah, when you put them together on screen, they looked, they looked like a very handsome couple. Yeah, I mean, it's she's similar to Rosie Huntington, right there, I suppose, but mm. she's also done quite a bit of martial arts, so her fight scenes weren't that unconvincing when she had to defend herself as well. Yeah, it's true, because she was in Dark Angel, wasn't she, that TV show, so I guess she did yeah, some training for that. This. Mm. Yeah, Harris is an interesting character that I think we'll continue to come back to, because as you said at the start, she's used as the setup for him, and then they become kind of equals in the relationship and then she becomes a damsel in distress. Like they keep using her in different ways. And I watched a couple of behind the scenes videos and they were sort of adamant that this character, Gina is not a damsel in distress. She does not need rescuing. And I was thinking that's not the film I watch. She definitely does need rescuing. Yeah. She's, she, she's, she's able to defend herself, but she wouldn't have been able to get out of that situation without Bishop. No, I, I mean, she, has one moment that she was sort of fights back and she gets shot doesn't she in the side but i didn't really feel like she had a, any kind of agency or or fight in her in that way to me it felt like she was sitting around waiting to be rescued yeah definitely i mean i think she's a teacher isn't she or something like that in, in the movie she is but i'm sure now you tell me if i'm wrong i'm sure she says in her backstory that she used to be a soldier i don't she may have done i don't i don't remember personally if she does say that because she's been around a few different countries and that's how she ends up in the one place. I think it might be, I don't know if it's Vietnam or somewhere like that, she ends, or Cambodia, or she ends up in like a, a location where just, she decides to stay there, doesn't she? And become a teacher and help the, the, the village there she's living in the, and the kids to give them an education. But I'm sure she's got that because she's been traveling around 
going to all these different areas in their capacity as a soldier. Yeah, she, she, yeah, I think she may have. I mean, while we're on about locations, he certainly didn't spare any spots in this movie, did he? Uh, Brazil, Thailand, Australia, Bulgaria. Yeah, right. I wonder why Jason Statham signed on to do this sequel. Where are you filming? And, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, yeah. And I think it's at the water scenes. We're in Slough. That's a bit of an environment yeah. change. <laughs> Maybe it's an old diving training pool for him or something that he's got uh, he's got an in on. I don't know. But and one thing I did think is the the, the fight choreography and, and the stunts in this movie are are really really like top tier. Yeah, particularly in that um, there's a couple of scenes, isn't there? But particularly in that initial restaurant scene, I thought was great. So as you said at the start of the movie, he's like retired, isn't he? He's faked his death from the first one, and he's in Rio, which is great for the state because he's had two missed opportunities to go to Brazil because they were going to do a sequel to the Italian job called the Brazilian job, which they probably would have had to retitle it thinking about what that's come to mean. Yes. And he didn't make it to past five, did he either? Because that was set in Rio. So it's nice he's finally made it to Brazil and he gets approached, doesn't he, there by a courier for, as we find out later, for Crane. But there's a really cool fight scene, isn't there, as he takes on like multiple assailants there in the restaurant, yeah. Yeah, and I did. I did think the hang. But when he jumps onto the hang glider, I thought that was a mm-hmm. homage to Jackie Chan, a hundred percent. I think all this scene was a bit Jackie Chan. It was like a James Bond opening, wasn't it? And that sense of like a mini mission, a mini movie. But I agree with you. Like the way he was using all the items around in the restaurant felt Jackie Chan-ish too. Yeah. Yeah, and it was nice to see the. Uh... The assassin suitcase made an appearance. He had two in this movie. Uh, he did, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because I think yeah, there's a couple of cool moments when he's using things like that later. But I made a list of all the things he used in this restaurant scene. Um, he used, let's see, tables, knocked the initial courier uh, woman out and then used the table as like a shield, didn't he? Yeah. He used a barbecue. He put the guy's face on the on the barbecue and scorched him. He used the fish trays on the other side of the barbecue. So he grabbed another gun, slammed his head into the fish and ice trays. The best bit, I think, I don't know if you agree, is when he gets the one of the assassin's knives and he puts it through another assassin's hand into the back. In, into him, yeah, yeah, that did, that's, I did remember that that's cool. And then there's a taser being used at one point. So he tasers a couple of guys and then he sets them on fire because they've got covered in alcohol or some sort of cooking solution and uses the taser to start a fire i didn't i, I didn't actually look who who was in involved with the stunts in this movie i didn't know whether it was in and like a known person or not I, I forgot to check yeah i'm not sure either because we know we have discussed this happening in the past that there's been some quite well-known people he's obviously worked with Corey un in a lot of his movies they've clearly built a relationship he's worked with chad stileski hasn't he in the past no i'm not sure who was the he was a choreographer for this either. And as we've discussed before, it's actually really hard to find often. Anyway, you can find like big long lists of who did the stunts in it. But even on IMDb, it's often really hard to try and find who is in charge of the choreography. Yeah. I mean, I'm very glad that they didn't keep it in it like he was ignoring or getting beat up at first. And I thought they can't keep that in the movie. Surely every man would go and help in that situation. Hmm. Because at first he was just going to ignore it, wasn't he? He said, oh, it's not my business sort of thing. And I thought, that's not, he's not going to be much of a hero if he does that. Oh, is that once they're in Thailand? and um... When she's on the boat getting beat up by a boy, well, a, a fake boyfriend, he says he's that's not right. going to go because it's none of his business. Yeah, you're right. So the other core cool astronaut scene fight, don't be. Then he jumps on the cable car. He jumps off the cable car onto a paraglider, which, as you said, is Jackie Chan, is James Bondish. And then next day we know he's in Thailand, isn't he, with Michelle Yeoh's May, which seems to be his like, like his little oasis. That's the place he goes to when he needs to escape from the world. Why he wasn't there, yeah. I don't know. And you're right, that's when Jessica Alba's Gina turns up with his fake boyfriends. She's got bruises, hasn't she? And then yeah. there's an argument that night in the boat. Yeah, he did sort of seem to be disinterested to begin with. And I think what's interesting is that would have been the character from the first movie. I think Bishop from Mechanic 1 would have been like, oh, whatever, it's not my business. I need to keep myself out of it so I don't bring any attention on to myself. But the character yeah, they set up in this scene... Much... 
yeah, he's much more of a classic hero, isn't he, in this movie than the first one? Yeah, definitely. And I think that starts when he has that conversation with May, because they talk about the fact that he clearly has done a similar thing for her in the past. There's this hint of like, I ended up here because Bishop saved me from somewhere. So we, we get lots of these little moments of trying to show him as being this more classic Stath style heroic character. Yeah, because presumably he would have been in the military before he'd become an assassin. So he was probably more of a hero at that time than and mm. then he moved on to what he does now. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if they get him back for the third one, which I would definitely watch and I would enjoy seeing him in, it'd be interesting if they delved a bit more into that, wouldn't it? Because we've we've done it here in this sequel and we found out a bit more about his past and Crane is somebody from his past. And then would they continue that idea? Would we now reveal, as you said, like literally how he gained these skills would be quite an interesting angle to take. Yeah. I mean, m- moving on now, I, the, the, the deaths he's like asked to, to perform are, are like <laughs> some of the, the most incredibly difficult situations ever to, for him to have done any of them was, was like insane. Do you think they should have abandoned the fake death angle for this one because i know that's his skill set i know that's what's been set up as what he can do but because of the situations as you said they're so difficult he has to get into it's very very hard for him to make these deaths look accidental well i mean touching on that the first death he crushes his windpipe so i don't know how that would be accidental no i agree and also everyone saw that those two were alone together in that cell and like, just I mean, accept that he just accidentally poisoned himself, this guy. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, the swimming pool, that, that is, I mean, apart from the fact it obviously would have been tested, it wouldn't be sort of susceptible to cracks, I wouldn't have thought, or it wouldn't. I mean, those pools do exist, which is quite mm. scary. Mm. You've got to have some balls to jump into that swimming pool, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's true. So what happens, isn't it? Like, Gina's there to find, to set him, to get him and set him up, isn't it? And then she gets kidnapped, but because they've slept together and he's fallen for her, which, again, like I say, I get, she's just Jessica he has to go and, do, yeah, like you say, do these three hits, doesn't he? So one is uh, arms dealer in a prison. One yeah. is a human trafficker in Australia, isn't it? He's like a businessman. And then the last one is the Tommy Lee Jones character, who's another arms dealer. But he's got like some secret bunker, hasn't he? So these are the three hits well, he has to do. Go on. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I think they're all arms dealers, aren't they? I think the human trafficking's a sideline because he touches on it when he's talking to, to Tommy Lee Jones' character at the end. I think they're all arms dealers. They're all the competition for Crane, aren't they? Yeah. He wants to wipe them all out, doesn't he? See, he has the whole market. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two interesting things, isn't there? Like there's the sense of like, should they just have ditched the accident angle? Because I don't really see what difference it makes. I guess maybe the, for the first one or two, it was the he, they were worried about the the other guys cottoning on to what was going on. But also, you think they would just do that anyway? And yeah, also, I like, think that's the only reason. I think that's the only reason because they don't want the other guys to think that their lives are under threat. So I think that's the only reason they're meant to be accidents. Mm, yeah, fair enough. I guess at least as long as the news are reporting them as accidents, it doesn't matter what anyone localized things does it like if the other prisoners know like who cares yeah definitely and it's another part of the film where they're clearly taking great pains to put the bishop character as the hero because they're you know like they're all unredeemable bad guys that he's going after crane's not sending him after a, a just a an everyday businessman in order to get that 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 business if you know what i mean get that part of the yeah. market they all have to be like bad, bad guys, because Bishop wouldn't do it otherwise. Yeah, I mean, with with Alba being sort of the... with it, He's doing it for her. I think he would have had to have done it in the end, but ordinarily, I think they had to have something wrong with them for him to want to do the job. I, I, I see what you're saying there. Because that doesn't feel like an element that would have mattered to Bishop in the first movie again. I think he just would have done the job for the money. Yeah, because he's retired now and he, he genuinely doesn't want to get involved in any of this anymore, does he? So, Yeah, it's true. Um, so, yeah, we've got the prison one and I really like the build-up to that. It has that kind of procedural 
intricate nature of like getting the mission plans. I used to love watching the old 60s Mission Impossible TV show. And that would spend as much time planning the mission and getting all the elements together as it would doing the mission. And I think this first one with him breaking into the prison to get cruel has that sense. Did you enjoy that as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I love movies like that. I always like, I also like the movies where they'll pull a big job off and then they'll go back and explain how mm. it was all done. I also love that aspect of movies as well. Really, really do love it. I mean, one of my favourite movies, which probably isn't even like that, that many people, is, is Escape Plan with Sylvester Stallone. I just think that's brilliant. Because it has that element to it. Yeah, yeah. Are you a big fan of Prison Break, the TV show, aren't you, as well? Yeah, Prison Break, yeah, definitely. So clearly, this is your warehouse, this sense of being able to get out of an impossible situation and seeing the clever machinations that go behind it is something that you're into. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, whether it would be possible, I mean, that prison, hmm. I don't know. I, a lot of the things, it's just would he really have got into them, but obviously for the movie, it's it's got to be done. But Yeah, this prison is kind of like an island, isn't it? It's a bit like Alcatraz or... Quite scarily, it's, a, it's an old prison as well. I wouldn't like to have been sort of in prison there. Yeah, sure. The, obviously, the best bit was the Batman 66 shark repellent, right? You just rub a bit of cream on you and sharks will just give, give you full distance. And I, I love I loved how they managed to get a bit of diving in there for him as well. Yeah, of course. Do you reckon he did that? Uh, I think it, in the trivia it says... Uh, he has perfect form in the diving, but he was an Olympic diver. But I don't know whether that means that he actually did it because it was quite a distance. Mm. I mean, whoever did the dive, be it the state or a stunt double, and we know he tries to do as much as he can. I mean, they're not wrong in the trivia. It did look, you know, pretty perfect, perfectly formed. Yeah, I just don't know, like, whether it's, I can't, I don't, I couldn't tell whether the hang glide was CGI or a stunt. I can't remember now, but I mean. The- there's, there were some really bad green screen shots in this movie, weren't there? The insurance for, for a movie like this, for a star to do everything themselves, would be would be insane. Mm. Yeah. Well, the, in the restaurant, right if we, you know, we're flashing back to the restaurant with the hang glider, that is definitely a really bad green screen. And there's a scene later on the on a boat um, after the Australian pool job well, that is definitely a really bad green screen too. So there was clearly a mixture of the two things going on. Right. There's a guy on Twitter, have you seen him who... Shows you all the green screen stuff on movies. No, that's interesting. I have to look him out. I don't know what he's called. I'll have to find him. He sat there in a green suit, but <laughs> like a full green morph suit, and he he shows you scenes in movies, and then he wipes all the special effects away to show you how it was actually mm. done. Okay, yeah, that would be interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll look him out. Or yeah, you pass that detail on if you find it later. Thank you. But I re- yeah, like I, said, I really like the scene where like he's he's really planned it, hasn't he? So he finds a guy who he can pass as and he paints on fake dice tattoos on his face he um creates some fake chewing gum doesn't he using semtex or some sort of explosive he puts the firing pin and this locator that crane's given him into an empty cigarette and puts a dot on it it's just all these little details that i thought was really interesting that that he you can just see how intelligent he is and how he's got to think about all the different angles in order to to, to make these missions successful Oh, yeah, the setup's brilliant, but, I mean, I don't think... I can't remember what he actually does to get arrested. I think he just gives someone a bit of abuse, doesn't he? Or Yeah, the police, isn't it? He's just rude to them. I'm not sure they'd send him to that prison for that for that crime. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, also, yeah, because you've got, like, warlords in there. Absolutely. I agree. Um, but also, like, it's there's it's a lot of cliches, isn't there? Like, he saves the warlord's life from an attack. And then suddenly they're best mates and he's inviting him around for dinner and things like that. Like these are just like cliches the film's leaning into to keep the plot moving forwards, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it's hilarious when um when he's escaping, he squeezes the Semtex into like a a gap in the wall. And he and he uses that to blow it up. But what I thought was hilarious was that in the security booth, they're watching on CCTV and they happen to have a camera trained on that exact square of wall not anywhere else in the prison just that exact square of wall where he's escaping from there's a cctv camera pointed right at it yeah it's got it's essential for the plot though isn't it (laughs) yeah it's just i mean why they couldn't just had a a guard in the yard or something i don't know it's silly yeah i I mean they are all brilliant i do i did 
I don't dislike the film, but there's so much you can pick apart from from a critical point of view. And do you know what? What you said there is really interesting because I finished watching it and I was like, oh, I don't know what I think of that. And then the like, you know, an hour later, two hours later, the next day, it stayed with me in terms of the entertainment value. Like I sort of, as we said before at the start, I didn't really, I think in a week I'd have forgotten everything that happens. But now we're talking about and I'm thinking about the film. It's all entertaining because it's all so fast moving and it's just getting on to the next well choreographed or well designed scene. So I think it's entertaining whilst you're watching it. It did it did very well. It did mm. better than the first one, didn't it, financially? Yeah, it made loads. So it cost forty million to make, which is pretty, you know, reasonable budget for this kind of movie. And it made one hundred twenty-five million, one hundred twenty-six million. So yeah, it was massively successful. The gutter have cornered all the all the Southeast Asian places because of the locations as well. I would have thought so. They'll make quite a lot of money there. Michelle Yeoh would be a big a big pull in the Asian end of things as well. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, you know, it's around the time of uh, Furious 7 too. So the state is finding a new market probably as well. He's finding some new people. Who Tom, Tommy Lee was. Jones, despite people probably were disappointed by how much he was in it, but he will have pulled in a lot of people as well. Yeah, true. Absolutely true. One thing I pulled about Tommy Lee Jones is I think he, he had William Stranick survived in on the yeah. siege. I think it would have been him. <laughs> yeah. I wrote literally exactly the same note. He has just rewatched that performance, hasn't he? I thought, yeah, I'll just do that again. He even uses the same line. I did write the line down, but I've lost it now. He uses a line from Under Siege. Oh, it's like his payoff line, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, at the very end when he watches the CCTV of Stavum, he, he says a line that he said in Under Siege. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Let's see if we can find that at some point as we're going. That's absolutely true. I mean... As we're talking about Tommy Lee Jones, I mean, what did you think of him? Did you think, you know, the surviving Stranix was good? Was it worth having him in the role? Was it? I think I think Tommy Lee Jones gets a lot of flack, but I mean, he's won Academy Awards. So when people slag off his, his acting, I think he's made some poor choices of movies over the years. But I don't I think he's, he's a good actor. I think he, he brings that character to life as someone who's an arms dealer with all that money. There would be some flamboyancy to them, I think. Yeah, he um he looks like another Tommy Lee. He looks like someone out of like Motley Crue or something in the way that he dresses, doesn't he? He he said that he I think he took the role after watching the first movie. He said he thought the first movie was brilliant, and mm-hmm. that's why he took the role. And he said, and who who wouldn't take the role? I got to wear some really cool shirts and really cool glasses. <laughs> it's true, yeah. He's got a little soul patch going on, hasn't he? I mean, yeah, I, I, I really liked him in this. I think he could have been used a lot more because the other two guys are, are not even well-known people. So they could have made it a bit... I mean, they could have just made it that he had to kill Tommy Lee Jones and had Tommy Lee Jones in the movie a lot more. Yeah, like as an extended mission, almost. Because yeah, the guys, like the guy in the prison, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything. And the Australian guy, I do recognise him, but I don't know what from. It won't be anything big, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes a while to get to Tommy Jones in the movie, as you said, like for us watching at runtime, but also takes a while for Bishop to get there, doesn't it? Because yeah. He's got to take out Krill and he's got to get the mission sorted and get in prison, get to meet Krill, kill him, get out, get to Australia, plan that mission. So how long do you reckon? Because it's not clear. What, what would your best guess be for how long from Jessica Alba's character, Gina, being kidnapped to the end of the movie is? I mean, you wouldn't think she'd been there that long, but you've got to be talking maybe a month. I I was wondering that as well, because she's in the same nighty the whole time. I've, I never noticed, to be honest, but <laughs> it definitely doesn't seem like it's been a long time. It, seem, it sort of seems like each kills like the next day sort of thing, which it is does. impossible. Yeah. Because- yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting time. I, I'm glad you said a month because I was just in my head. I cannot place it at all, Mo- only because she's still in the same costume. So it must well, be short, but actually it can't he, be short. Yeah, in between these kills, he also tries to rescue her from the boat as well. So. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, the second one then, so the Australian kill. That's the, that's the like the the hanging pool, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, the first thing I noticed about that is those suction cups are definitely not from Wish. He put a lot of faith into them, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, it's at the top of a skyscraper, isn't it? And it's one of these pools. Is it called like a sky pool? I don't know. Like one of these ones. Jut- okay, yeah, that jut out from the building, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a cool scene again, isn't it? So he kind of goes, mission, like Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, gets that, climbs out the window, as you said, uses some suction cups, but also uses like... Um, like climbing clips, doesn't he? Like yeah, between clips, the sills of the window. Which is a which is a great idea, um, because it pays off at the end, doesn't it? Because he manages to loosen it and slide down the gap to escape at the end when the pool's um, draining out. I thought it was it was absolutely brilliant the window setup where it looks like nothing's ever been touched. The only yeah. the only thing I mean it's all possible those suction cups exist, but. The one thing I did wonder is, can can you copy a key from a photo? I wasn't sure whether that was possible. Mm, yeah, I don't know either. Um, let's tell ourselves no, because, you know, I don't know about you, I often just put my keys down and don't think about it. So somebody could be coming along and taking a photograph of those. And Well, I did think the screws with the explosives in were, were really brilliant. Whoever come up with that is. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? So he drills like a, a little hole, doesn't he, in, like the, in the floor of the pool and puts in a... Like a mould, isn't it? You're with uh, yeah, it's like a plasterboard it. screw with some sort of explosive in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. And the effect is great, isn't it? Because the guy's swimming and he sees him, but only in enough time for the explosive to go off and it cracks. And then I was thinking to myself as I was watching it, well, he's just going to climb out then. But the suction starts immediately, doesn't it? And it's like a whirlpool sucking yeah, him down. It's a cool, yeah, it's a cool. Yeah, it's a cool effect. Big part of that, wasn't it? And when it cracks and he falls and the stays back in the building, is a great shot of him in the foreground and the guy falling in the background. But it looks like a waterfall and there's a rainbow. And then suddenly this ah, boom, guy in the background. It's fun. And it's just a mess on it. It's literally just a pool on floor, which from that height probably will be quite true. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think it's cool and it's fun and it's definitely the best scene in the movie. I'm just wondering, yeah, yeah. you know, witnesses, surely somebody would have at some point looked up. Yeah, well, I put that because that pool would probably be a bit of a tourist attraction because it's so unusual. Mm. So I think people would quite regularly look up and you're not going to not see a guy climbing on the outside of a building. No, exactly. spider manning it up there. And then, as you said, the next scene is what is what is when he the first time he tries to go and rescue Gina, isn't it? Because she manages to reveal in the video footage the yeah. name of the boat or the um the, the the mooring. I think is what she reveals to him, isn't it? I mean, I would. It's clever how he tracks the boat down. It's clever how she gives her the information. But are we supposed to believe that nobody on that boat saw a helicopter coming or heard a helicopter <laughs> coming and saw it hovering nearby as well? And not only that, it's a hilarious moment. I don't know if you picked up on it. When he's with the pilot, it's obviously just some guy that he's paid, like he's hired this this pilot to take him out because he says to him, well, it's your money, do what you want. He says to him, like, get lower and get nearer, or whatever he says, right? And then that's from inside the helicopter. And then we cut to outside. A helicopter doesn't do anything. It's still, in, so there's, there's the, some sort of continuity error going on here that, we need, for him to have been given that instruction, we then need to see it happen. But because we cut to when I presume it's already happened, it just feels really weird because the helicopter's already hovering in position so he can jump out into the sea. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what sort of range those those motorised things have got. I suppose he could have been quite a long way away from the, the boat for them not to have cottoned yeah. on. But Because he like swims, I guess he swims like into the path, doesn't he? Because the next shot we see is him underneath the boat and it's got a glass part of it's got a glass bottom hasn't it and then it's like yeah. peekaboo i'm here yeah and then he he goes through the ship taking everybody out i mean silence is on completely silent so you know somebody would have heard him and especially when people start falling down staircases and stuff mm. it's definitely john wick inspired this scene isn't it yeah and i mean crane is absolutely useless you can see why you're surrounded by that <laughs> yeah he needs he needs his team around him doesn't he and he acknowledges that bishop is the best but still doesn't think bishop will come and kill him at the end yeah well classic bad guy trope though right yeah definitely 
I think this is probably the second best scene after the pool. So this section here in the middle, I think, is the strongest because we have that really cool pool set up. And then we have this really exciting action scene where, yeah, he's taking people out. He's using them as human shields. He's doing all his cool stay stunt stuff. Is this the bit where he leaps and swings off the outside of the boat? Because I thought that was amazing. Yeah, it is, I think. Yeah, because later on, it's the dinghy, isn't it? Yeah, oh, the dinghy is fantastic, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but it backfires, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, he has to escape, and then he has to follow through with the third mission, which is the Tommy Lee Jones uh, surviving Stranix character. But um, they come up with their own little plan, don't they? Yeah, which I think is is a good little twist because, uh, like people like that, like arms dealers, like in a movie called Lord of War, it's it's quite realistic. They've got such a big ego that if someone gave them the opportunity to be the number one, they would take that opportunity and they would work with that person. I think. Yeah, that's a good shout. Stace manages to get himself into um, the safe room, doesn't he? Yeah, which is absolutely impossible. <laughs> sure, but um, not not for Bishop. No, not at all, no. Of course not. And yeah, and they come up with this plan, don't they, to actually turn the tables and Tommy Lee Jones' character, I haven't even got what his name is written down, but um, we just, let's just Adam, call him Stranix, why not? Oh, Mad- Adam, Matt it? Adam, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, they decide, don't they, they're going to turn the tables and they're going to take out Crane, which would leave Adams as kind of the head honcho, as you said, didn't they? Yeah, I think it was a good use of Tommy Lee Jones because I think if he'd have just killed him, it would have been a bit of a... A waste of a well-known, well-known actor. Yeah, so they fake his death, don't they? They make it look like there's been an accident in his compound, but actually stay stacked some underwater gear, hasn't he? And they swim away from the compound off to a local beach. Yeah. And then here again, we're now we're now back into rescue number two for Gina. Yeah. Do you think they should have thought of mixing that up a bit rather than getting back on the boat? Uh, I'm not sure because there was some good scenes like they wouldn't have been able to do like the the grenade in the hot tub was brilliant. So oh, I yeah. suppose if they, I suppose it gave them all the tools and the the things they wanted to make that scene really good. Yeah, so maybe even the earlier one. I don't know. I just thought it was a bit of a, a shame when you've got you know any location you want to use and they used the same big luxury yacht twice. Felt like a bit of a weird decision. Yeah, it's definitely a weird decision, but I, I suppose they must have drafted something together using all the all the different items and just thought we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Or they couldn't come up with a mm. different situation because they'd just done like an underground base. So I suppose they couldn't have give Crane a base because that would have been the same as the Tommy Lee Jones scene. So mm. that's interesting. And what you've mentioned there is something that Scott from Twentieth Century Geek and I've been talking about because we've been covering the Jackie Chan police story movies. Right. And it's his contention, and I agree with him, that often what they do is they decide, like, this is going to be the location. Like, we've got this cool factory. And then they go, what can we do? And they decide on what stunts or what areas of this factory location they've got they can use to sell a good action scene. And I think what you're saying is similar here. We've got this cool yacht. What can we use? And they split them between the two scenes, essentially, didn't they? Yeah. And as you said, we get the two best kills in this last section. We get Jacuzzi Grenade, which is a great name for a band. Yeah, and, it is. <laughs> and we get Jason Statham, and we get, get Bishop. Um, he's fighting a guy and he puts the, pushes the gun barrel up against his throat, doesn't he? And then punches the back of the, <laughs> the gun so the barrel like penetrates into his throat and kills him, which is badass yeah. as well. And I thought I thought the raft spinning scene was very transporter. Yes, that is. And this is the bit. This is the scene which made me think, like, well, actually, this feels more like a transporter move than a mechanic. I agree. He yeah. uses it as like a. He, he he shoots one of the cables, doesn't he? So then, when as the as the dinghy as the raft descends, it's spinning, isn't it? So as he spins and faces the bad guys, he shoots them. But then, as they shoot at him, this bulletproof raft. Uh, protects him and it keeps happening whoever, whoever come up with that scene is is clever but obviously inflatable rafts aren't bulletproof but it's the same in all these movies though isn't it neither are wooden tables but people use them all the time i mean i did watch i did watch a movie with uh chris hemsworth where he hides behind a ladder so yeah <laughs> i one of the, the extraction movies 
the area he takes cover behind a ladder. So, you know, anything. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And as you said, Crane is not much of a um, opponent for him, really, in the end, is it? He's taken everyone out and it's him versus he Crane. Been, I think he only hits him once. Yeah. And then so I'm just thinking how he got to that that position in life by being absolutely useless. He ties him up with like the anchor chain, doesn't he? I think. Yeah, yeah. Because Crane. I did sort of... think he was gonna just drop the anchor. I thought that's how he was gonna kill him. Yeah, that would have been cool. That'd have been better, and actually makes more sense. Crane set off like a self-destruct timer, hasn't he? Again, like a Batman '66 style villainous yeah. move. Yeah, that would have been interesting. A bit more brutal. It'd be, to, it'd be interesting to see if any of the people involved in this were Batman fans or drew any inspiration for the shark repellents and the other scenes from Batman. Yeah, yeah. Definitely has some of those vibes, doesn't it? Because, I mean, if shark repellents existed, obviously, why do people keep getting attacked by sharks? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I guess it's that, like we, we spoke at the start, perhaps, kind of James Bondy as well, isn't it? I think the arc of this movie has a, has a James Bond arc. Yeah. And just grab us obviously the Bond girl and then they end up together at the end and She is sort of she doesn't seem to age Jessica Alba. She's mm. a very beautiful lady. Agreed. Although doesn't seem to do very much anymore, I don't think. I can't really think of the last thing she was in. Uh no, I don't I'm thinking Fantastic Four, but maybe there was something after that. Yeah. But she, so she, she escapes, doesn't she, from the boat? Um, because the, it's the Tommy Lee Jones character helps her to escape, doesn't he? Yeah, and an extremely Bond style escape as well, I would, I think. Oh, no, no. Um, Stath puts her in like the, like a diving That's belt, true. doesn't yeah. he? And then, so she's in that and she drifts away. And there's no way for Bishop to get off the boat, is there? So he hides inside the like, anchor housing, I think it is. Yeah, I did wonder where he went. So, and then, obviously, when Tommy Lee Jones looks into it at the end, I did remember that scene when Tommy Lee Jones did it at the end. But I, I, when he actually ran into the exploding boat, I couldn't remember how he got out. No, I couldn't either. And they keep it from you, don't they, for a while. They make you think, although we know as an audience, but they, they try to sell it to you that he died in the explosion. Um, you yeah. get to see Gina go back to her old life, don't you, and reconnect as a teacher and... And then it's revealed, as you said, isn't it, with um, with Stranix Adams watching more very conveniently placed CCTV cameras directly on that part of the boat. Because yeah. <laughs> he's been looking at the blueprints of the boat, hasn't he? He's been working it out in his own mind. He's like, I know he wouldn't have died. How did he do it? And he can't figure it out. And then it turns out that, yeah, he's hidden in this, this reinforced housing area of the boat, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's impenetrable. I can't remember what it was for, but it was impenetrable or something along those lines. So we get the classic cool hero guy moment at the end where she turns and looks past the camera and there he is with the the, the, you know, the mirrored shades on, the stay smile, looking all handsome and rugged. Here I am, I'm back. Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't adjust his colour in this movie. I was quite disappointed. Mm. No, he didn't. Which would have fit with this, you know, a classic kind of, you know, Bondian thing as well as a Statham thing that would have worked. So, do you think Mechanic Three would be? They could bring Tommy Lee Jones back, couldn't they? They could be. They could be working together. He might be sending him out on missions, but then I guess he wouldn't want to work for an arms dealer, would he? No, I mean, not really. I don't think he would for that reason. But I mean, it would be cool to see Tommy Lee Jones back again. Hmm. Because he clearly had respect for Bishop. He clearly admired his skill set and what he could do. Yeah, I mean, I suppose circumstances, it depends if circumstances arose where Jason Statham needed the money or needed uh, Adam's help, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? So it's to infiltrate somebody that's even worse than him, maybe, or... There's absolutely no plot or anything on IMDb. It's just got Mechanic Free listed, as well as Spy 2, which you spoke about on your last episode. Mm, yeah. Spy 2 is also listed, so. Which one feels more likely, do you think? I don't know whether, like, you, you touched on Spy 2, and he was brilliant in Spy 2, but it just, dep- it just depends on the storylines, I suppose. Mechanic Free is action, so it's a lot easier to 
action movies never stop being made, so it's probably a lot easier to come up with a story for that. Mm. But whereas Spy was extremely successful, so they'd have to think whether they wanted to potentially put a dampener on the first one by doing a second one that was poor or not very good. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? And I guess, well, you know, your spy movies, I guess it, you just you come up with a new mission, don't you, much as you do here. But I agree with you. I think this lends itself more to be, being able to tell those kind of isolated little stories. And as we said here, really, the plot doesn't matter. It's just so you can hang off some well choreographed co action scenes, isn't it? Yeah, action movies are so easy to. You've got you've got all those lot that will watch everything that's action, like Max and yeah, me, you, Chris Feld, Dave. We'll all watch every action film that's ever brought out with certain people, so they've got that audience there always. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I'd love to see them bring together the likes of I don't know John Wick, Bishop, Jason Bourne, and all them in the same movie could be something special if the right story was written. Yeah, like a crossover expendables but with like established characters but with non-ancient people like <laughs> Spendables is good but still owns like 70 years old and should still be running around killing people no absolutely i guess like, if, you... they're out, like if they're writing out the older people like arnie and bruce willis and still owning the expendables why not bring in the newer people like john wick and people like that yeah 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 you know it's interesting and i think you know you we're just into the rights aren't we we're into the studios having to work with each other which is notoriously difficult to to get them to cooperate because they're all worried about their own back end, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, of course. The only other thing I've got is how could Jessica Alba not think Jason Stave could dance? She's obviously not seen his music video. Well, absolutely, yeah. I, I, I annoying, isn't it? How dare she say that? No. Although then, then when she said they couldn't dance, I was expecting that scene for them to actually dance whereas what they do is just slow dance which let's be honest anyone can do yeah i doubt that was literally the most awkward thing i've ever done in my wedding it's so it was so horrible that everyone's watching you dance i get that i mean i've not been there so i don't you know but i can understand but i mean you, you know you're shuffling feet rather than trying to throw shapes right so oh yeah yeah it's not difficult to do <laughs> but all, all eyes are on you and like me and my wife just kept talking to each other and like saying like making each other laugh because we didn't oh, know what else to do because everybody's yeah. watching you get everybody up quickly right that's what you do you do 30 seconds yeah. come on everybody up you come yeah yeah i well, i think i tried to desperately to find that tommy lee jones quote as we were talking but um i've not been successful i'm afraid because i guess his character is so is so um Mine really, the the story. It's not, on, it's not on IMDb, and I did a quick Google search. But if you if you want to have a look whilst I read out some letterbox, yeah, go on. All right, I've got one from Kaiser Soze. He says, with the significant exception of the heavily marketed pool on the top of a skyscraper sequence, Mechanic Resurrection is one of the most painfully flat and stupid sequels to have come along in years. The CGI is atrocious. The action film so poorly that at times it is incomprehensible and the script is insultingly dumb. Jason Statham has the portrayal of the gruff action hero Dan Pat by this point in his career, but even he can't inject any life into this snooze fest. Not a fan. See, like so, some of these reviews, you just think to yourself, he can't be that big a Jason Statham fan because that's just what the movies are like. I agree. And, and I, I think the only, I think the only scene as we, we lauded the restaurant scene, and I think we rightly say because the choreography and the use of the space is great. I do think it's slightly over edited, but I don't think it's to the point where it's incomprehensible. And I do agree massively that trailers use too much of the good scenes in movies. I do agree with that because you go and watch a movie, and sometimes you've literally seen every good bit of the movie. Mm, no, that is true. Absolutely. We need to go back to those days of the teasers, don't we? I mean, think about the first Jurassic Park trailer, which all we saw was a, a dinosaur foot. We all still wanted to go and see Jurassic Park, right? Yeah, it does great. It does great on me how much they use in trailers sometimes. Mm. Okay, Matt Singer, slightly more positive. Jason Statham's character in this movie is an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat, marksmanship, swimming, diving, explosives, chemistry, extreme wall climbing, mixed martial arts, creating booby traps, document forging, scuba, computer hacking, tying knots. 
ironically, the one skill he doesn't seem to possess, mechanic. Still, the way this movie addresses human trafficking and Jessica Alba's butt in one scene multiple times is quite impressive. Yeah, we're all we're all perverts. We all enjoyed seeing Jessica Alba. Let's not be. Let's well, not be and, and actually, it was. I think that scene on the beach he's referring to was kind of equal objectification because we get Jason Statham doing the kind of Daniel Craig out of the sea shot as well. Yeah. So we are we are objectifying Jessica Alba, but we are objectifying Jason Statham too. Oh, there we, I found I found one thing. Bang your dead is from the original. He says bang your dead, mm-hmm. but it, that's also said in the original mechanic as well with Charles and, Bronson. And I think that is the line from Under Siege too. I think it's in all three, isn't it? It might be. Yeah, I, I know it was written here. I just don't know where it's gone. Was it in the trivia? Yeah, it was in the trivia, but I think it was in the spoiler section, but I don't seem to be able to find it myself now. But anyway, that's fine. Uh, Lou Shoemaker says, Jason Statham really should not have ever made the mechanic. The, ori- the original Charles Bronson movie is, as I understand it, much darker and more cynical. So turning it into a blam blam action movie for Statham doesn't really work. Thankfully, since the sequel wasn't based on anything, Resurrection is way better. This isn't amazing, but it's got a few solid action sequences and halfway decent cast. The big problem with the movie is that it makes no damn sense. The plot requires it to rush through the big set pieces and the main villain is pretty lame. But then, Tommy Lee Jones shows up in the third act and is great. So, you know, pros and cons. Arthur Bishop isn't one of Statham's more entertaining characters and I'm not eager to see him return to the character. Even though every Jason Statham character is the baddest dude in the world, something about Bishop feels particularly phony. He's an international assassin who faked his own death, but he also takes time to set up chic little apartment spaces with retro record players and French press coffee. The scenes of Bishop hanging out on his houseboat look like he was prepping or an Instagram shoot. But other than that, he's fine. His chemistry with Albert is pretty good. And, you know, he can still kick people in the face real good. Yeah, you can tell Lou Shoemaker's a proper fan. He, he knows what to expect. He's, he slags the movies off sometimes for story and things like that, but he, he knows what to expect when he goes into the movie. Yeah, he always likes the, the Statham part of it, doesn't he? Yeah. All right, last one. Kelsey says, this was really fun and also a little cheesy, but that's okay. You can't really go wrong with Jason Statham if you want an action movie. Also, shark repellent is used in a totally straight-faced manner and I was dying with laughter. That's uh, yeah, that's fair enough. So you know, a mix, a mixed bag, but I think that makes sense for this kind of movie. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be every for everybody, is it? But then those who, as you said multiple times, like this kind of movie, like Jason Statham doing this kind of action flick, are going to get what they want from it. Yeah, the prison scene. I imagine you will have seen this movie. It did make me think of Double Team with John Claude Van Damme. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Not for a long time, but... Because he has to escape from a prison in, in a similar sort of manner, apart from there's crazy lasers in the in the sea and stuff in that movie, but... <laughs> no sharks, but lasers. And not sharks yeah. with freaking laser beams attached to their head. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> so before you, I let you go, where are you going to place this in terms of the state's filmography? I think it's... A... A classic for me. Mm, interesting. Okay, why would that be? I, I really like the mechanic movies. I'm, I'm assuming I said the mechanic was a classic. Well, I'm hoping I did. You actually just, said just... it was worth catching. I checked before oh, did we recorded. I? Yeah. I mean, this this one is better than the first one. Hmm? In, in my opinion, obviously, everyone has their own opinions, but I do think this movie, although it's not as gritty as the first one, and it, it's a lot more. He's heroic rather than he's not really an assassin. He's doing it to save someone, but mm. I just think this is a better movie. I think I agree. I think plot-wise, it's not, but entertainment value, it is. Yeah, I do. I just think it's that, like the ninety minutes doesn't feel it. It's it goes quite quick, and they mm. get a lot into that ninety minutes as well. Yeah, and I think considering where we've been at with his career recently, and if we take. Um, 
furious seven out of the the picture and we take kind of spy out of the picture as well you know these ones which we've been calling kind of the safe state era we you know like parker home front redemption wild card this does feel like it really knows what it is and what it wants to do you know you and i did killer elite all, all of these ones really from this era i think this is utilizing the state in the way that he should be utilized really yeah, definitely. He can do no wrong when he's doing this sort of movie. Mm. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can flag the storyline off as much as you want, but the storyline's nothing to do with him. He's just being employed to do a job and, and be whoever he's been written to be. Yeah. At times, he's kind of the cool Steve McQueen character and Paul Newman character he wants to be from those 60s and 70s movies. And at times, he's the John Cole Van Damme ass kicking character that he wants to be from that era of movie making. So it combines those two elements of him of his state persona really well i think yeah definitely well thank you mate and thank you everyone for listening and by taking this journey with me through the state's filmography that of course was mechanic resurrection next up in a fortnight is the swift return of chris and dave to discuss fast and furious eight also known as the fate of the furious followed by another prime pair Mike and Megan to mull over the Meg for anyone that is watching along. I've been I'm Jack's Musings, that's J A C S, and you can find me on X where I'm most active. You can also contact the show directly on X or Instagram under the name Back to the Filmog. Please make sure you use the hashtag Follow the Filmography. I'm also a proud member of the Comics Emotion family, a super place full of the world's greatest people, dedicated to bringing you podcasts on a variety of geeky topics. So, please make sure you take the time to search, subscribe and rate our shows whenever and wherever you listen. Until next time, be excellent to each other and make sure you take the time to treat yourself too. I'm Jack signing off. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers.